guys, it's Kelly Lanabola here and I'm back with another video for W Plus 9. Today we are going to be using some new stamp sets from the July 2017 release. Um, the first one that we're going to be using is the Summer Citrus, which mine is uh, the packaging for the design team, so I already removed some of those stamps. And then the second one is the Southern Sentiments. So both of those are new for July of 17 and um, just lots of really good sets coming out. I decided that I wanted to watercolor the fruit, which basically means I up and lost my mind. <laughs> um, I don't typically do no line watercoloring. It is very time consuming and I am terribly nervous about it basically the whole time I'm doing it. So nonetheless, I have picked out some distress inks, I've smushed them down on my Ranger craft mat and I am stamping my images in antique linen because it's a super light ink. It will kind of melt into the rest of the watercoloring and you won't be able to see it. Don't mind that little hand there. My son was watching me and watching me means touching all of the things. So <laughs> anyway, I've stamped a lime first and then I put down some clean, clear water because that's just how I normally do it. It's just that, that was like my go-to and then I wanted to change up the technique. So this will be the only one I'm doing this way. Uh, but I just put down some clean, clear water and now I'm dropping in um, some twisted citron. And I'm just kind of trying to build that up from there. I'm moving on to the mowed lawn to add in some shading. Working with a number two round brush, which is a really pretty tiny brush. Um, I know that there's a lot of other watercolor artists who can use bigger brushes. I am just not that confident in my ability to do so. So then I went ahead and stamped the lemon. Again, I'm using that same antique linen. And then there's also a lemon that's cut in half, which I thought would be cute just to kind of break it up and add um, just a little bit of something extra. So I stamped them right next to each other. They are not, they're, well, I shouldn't say they're not touching. They're barely touching. Just the tip is touching. So I use a whole lot of watered down mustard seed to fill in the center of the cut lemon where it would be the lightest. And I'm just gonna let that dry while I work on the full size one. I use that same watered down version to fill in the whole area of the lemon. And then I'm picking up some more mustard seed and dropping that along the bottom and then doing just a little line of it along the top. So that way my highlighted portion is in the center for the shading on this one, I'm going to use um, fossilized amber, which is uh, a less saturated, um, so it's not as bright. Uh, it has a little bit more brown or orange in it. And then the way that I prefer watercolor is I kind of let them chill and do their thing, not dry completely, but dry a little bit so there isn't a ton of pigment on there, and then keep building up those layers. So keep adding in... Um, the darker colors. I'm going to add just a little bit of the dark uh, mode lawn to the top of the lime. And this video is rather long. I tried to let you see every single thing that I was doing um, because I know when I watch other people's videos, sometimes it's hard to see how they got there. Um, this is definitely more difficult for me than a regular Copa coloring. Copa coloring, I feel like I'm doing something the whole time so it moves very quickly. Going back in with that fossilized amber as it kind of dries back on the lemon so that I can um, just add a little bit more shading to the top. I blended that out with a little bit of mustard seed. I didn't want to add too much. I'm not trying to get rid of the highlight on the top, but I did want it to not have a hard edge. So now that the center of my cut lemon is dry. I'm going to go in and start adding some of the shading to that. I added the mustard seed from the bottom working towards the top and then again adding the shading with that fossilized amber. Now in between each of these, I know it's off screen so you can't see it, I am rinsing my brush um, every time so that that way I'm not contaminating any of the other colors with colors I might already have on my brush. This is all dry now. Um, my lime is dry, so I'm going to go ahead and stamp um, my pineapple. And I inked it up with the same antique linen. And then I'm just going to use my finger to wipe away the area that I don't want to stamp. Because it's such a light ink, um, I really didn't need to do more than that. If you are nervous about it, you could use a baby wipe or a chamois um, to wipe that away. I just use my finger and I'm good with it. So for the pineapple... Um, this is one part where I started to get really nervous because there's 
objects that are right next to each other. And if you put water on that lime, it's going to reactivate that stress ink and it will start to bleed into the pineapple. So basically I spent, I don't know, an hour just being completely terrified. Um, well, I shouldn't say that because I had to wait for the dry time. So I spent 30 minutes being completely terrified and 30 minutes being bored out of my mind. <laughs> so I'm gonna start doing some of the shading with the brushed corduroy. Um, and then I, I, out of habit, I guess, um, I color with my light source in the top right hand corner. So that's what I'm doing. I'm leaving um, the highlight on the right hand side. I am at adding a little bit of shading to the right because it is a round object. So it would be darker where it rounded out to the back of the pineapple. But just kind of alternating between adding down the fossilized amber and the brushed corduroy to get that shading. At this point, uh, I'm not worried about any of the detail work. In that um, stamp, there are lines for the actual pineapples. And I know that you probably wouldn't think you would be able to see it still after putting all this pigment on top, but they actually are slightly visible in real life. So um, you, I can see where I need to put the lines back in. I stamped the leaves. Again, everything is stamped in the anti antique linen. And then I'm going to go in with the same, um, what is it, Twisted Citron to add the color to my leaves. So the way that I was looking at this is I had three yellowish objects. So that kind of, that working in odd numbers, your brain has a tendency to pair things in even numbers. It starts to pair them together. So if you work in odds, um, it doesn't do that. So here again, I'm just dropping in um, Twisted Citron and then moving on to the Mowed Lawn when I wanna add um, a little bit of a deeper shading. I just tried to concentrate um, adding shading to one side or the other of the leaf so that there was still a highlight. I added the darkest shading to the point where it would join to the pineapple. Anyway, back to the pairings. Um, so at this point, I have three yellowish items. And I only have two greenish items. So as I was doing this, um, I was like, I'm probably going to have to stamp another line here on the left. So just to kind of give you um, a little bit into what my thought process is, I wanted to darken up that side of the cut lemon where it's the furthest away, so the left-hand side. So I did that with um, some fossilized amber. Now that it's dry, I used a very dry brush and picked up the pigment. And then I also drew in the lines for the lemon segments, um, which again was really easy to follow because you can actually still see them. Just to give it some character and a little bit more of that watercolor look, I'm using the fossilized amber to add in a couple of imperfections into my lemons. So a couple of little just dots, um, they aren't perfectly round, the shapes are not perfectly created. Um, it doesn't need to be, you're just adding a little bit of detail to make them more interesting. I'm gonna go in and add just a little bit more of that shading to really emphasize that cut edge. And then I'm blending that out with some mustard seed. I felt like on the right hand side, it was maybe just a little bit too strong. I'm gonna do the same thing for those little dots on my lime since that's dry. Now, mind you, all of this time I'm waiting for my pineapple to dry. And when I say I spent 30 minutes being terrified and I spent 30 minutes being bored out of my mind, I don't mean to downplay the um, the technique. It, I'm, For most people, I'm sure it really is very relaxing. I just don't have the patience for it. But when I saw this set, I couldn't see the card any other way in my head. Like I just saw them as watercolored. Um, so I kind of didn't have a choice. <laughs> I kind of didn't have a choice. Um, and they are beautiful. I love the way the card came out. It's just sometimes this particular process for me because it requires me to slow down and everything in my life is like, go, 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 go. Um, it can sometimes just be a little much for me personally. Do I think that it was worth it? Yeah, totally. Cause I love the way the card came out. Um, so now I'm adding in an orange. So we're just talking about working in those threes. Um, so for the color, a lot of times you'll hear like these different rules that they have in design, different rules. Um, the rule of thirds. So you don't want to put anything directly in the center. Um, the, the, the color rule is a lot of times the one I hear is the gallon um, 
gallon pint quart. So you want a gallon of one color, a pint of another, and a, and, and a quart of another. So here as I'm doing this, you can see I'm adding in my orange. I'm doing the shading on this one with the right persimmon. My pineapple's still wet, guys. If you put two things next to each other that are still wet, the water doesn't care that one's an orange and one's a pineapple. The water just knows it's touching something else is wet, so it's going to bleed. And you can see the left-hand side of my pineapple is getting pretty orange at this juncture. So I'm gonna blot that up in the hopes that I can salvage my pineapple. So I blotted it up and then I'm just going to have to basically leave well enough alone at this point because I got impatient and I didn't wait until it was dry and you can see it's still bleeding that orange, still bleeding it right into that pineapple. Um, that's my fault. That's my fault for being impatient. Um, you, I could heat set these in between, but heat setting it does get a different look than just letting it dry when you're doing different things. You can get um, blooms um, if you're drying, like heat setting it, not that you don't get them. If it just dries naturally, you can, but they're much more apparent if you heat set it. So I'm going back in with the brush corduroy, putting those lines back into my pineapple, and now I'm going to add even more shading. This is all dry at this point. I had to I had to walk away and let everything just dry. So I'm adding more shading with the fossilized amber, and then I'm going to add um, just a little bit of clean clear water over the center so I don't get any hard edges. I'm gonna go back in and add even more shading with that brushed corduroy. And I'm also going to add just a little bit of shading to the bottom of the triangle. So where the lines meet and it triangles, diamonds, <laughs> um, where the lines meet and it creates that little diamond, I am just adding a little bit of shading there because pineapples are textured. So it, would, it wouldn't just be all one flat color. I'm going to now mix some of the brushed corduroy with the, um, what is that, carved pumpkin to add the shading to my orange. So since it's sitting behind that lemon and also behind that pineapple, there would be, um, it would be darker there. There would be shadows cast. And again, I'm picking up some clean, clear water with a very light moisture, damp brush to blend that out. And then I'm gonna add in just a little bit more of the, um, what is that, brushed corduroy so that it's um, just a little bit more shaded. I'm gonna stamp that last lime, again, wiping off that right-hand side so that I can stamp it behind the object. You could totally stamp and mask all of these before you started. I just don't have good luck with that. That's just me. So again, we're going in with the, the Twisted Citron, very, very diluted, very watered down, putting that down, and then we'll start bringing in more of the concentrated color I know with traditional watercolorists, they tend to do a light wash and then go back and do another wash and then go back. I'm already impatient. Like I'm, I'm already, I'm already struggling through with what I am doing here. So uh, I find it easier to just add in a couple of layers when I first put down the color and just add very minimal color and kind of wait it out after that. So again, this is set behind this other lemon, so there's going to be shading where it is behind, um, adding more of that with the mowed lawn. Rinsed my brush, and now I'm gonna go back in with the um, really super concentrated, I, I barely have any water on my brush at all, uh, brushed corduroy to do those lines, and I did not go directly over the center where the highlight is. I kept those, um, the darker lines, more toward where the shaded area was. For the orange, I added the little button on the end and then also those same kind of little dots that I had previously added. I'm going to add some just clean, clear water here to this other lemon to make sure that I reserve that highlight. If you have an area that gets too dark, you can add um, just a little bit of clean, clear water and it will push the pigment back out toward the edges. Um, so it'll push it away from wherever you drop that clean, clear water. And then I added further shading with the mowed lawn. Um, when I was doing the orange, since I was so paranoid about them being kind of damp, I left a little bit of a gap. Now that everything's completely dry, I'm gonna go back in and fill in that gap. Uh, I didn't really have any um, issues with that. If you have some harder edges that you want to soften out, just minimal water on your brush and just kind of glide over the whole thing. 
now that the lime, um, one more time adding that shading, now that it's completely dry, I'm going to go back in and add those same little dots that I have been doing to all of the fruit. And at this point, I'm pretty happy with the way that it works. So I'm going to do just a little bit of a background so that the it doesn't look just like fruit floating in space. So I'm using the number two round brush and I'm putting down a little bit of water. I'm not going all the way up to the fruit because I know, once again, we talked earlier, that if I touch the water to it, I'm risking the chance of bleeding. So I'm leaving myself a little bit of a gap around the fruit and then I'm going to drop in some uh, washed out brushed corduroy. Then I will take that I will move that with my brush up to the edge of the fruit. So I have a lot of control over how much water there is. I still felt like there was a little bit too much toward the bottom. So I'm using a paper towel to blot that up. And then I'll go back in and continue to add that shading and those shadows underneath that fruit. So it looks like, um, you know, they're sitting on a countertop or something. So they're grounded. There's a whole lot of... Um, warm colors going on in here. That's the, the brush corduroy is very warm. So I have those little pops of green, which are cooler, um, but I wanted to kind of offset that with a little bit of a background. So again, I'm putting down a border of clean, clear water. I am not bringing it all the way to the fruit. I'm just kind of outlining it with the clean, clear water. Then I'm going to bring in a number eight round brush, which is much bigger. And I'm just going to put down clean, clear water I didn't put down a ton. I just put down enough to make some pigment move. I'm going to pick up some Salty Ocean on the number two uh, brush, the smaller brush, and I'm just going to drop that in and kind of let it do its thing. Then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pick up the color that's already on there and kind of move it down towards my fruit. I'm trying not to over manipulate it. I don't really care um, what the background looks like, what the flow of the water is. I just wanted something in the background. Um, to kind of offset those cooler colors. So now here we have the gallon pint quart thing. So obviously a lot of yellow, yellowish brown um, would be our gallon. The pint would be the green and then the quart would be the orange. These other colors are, you know, like the blue is just pretty neutral um, for the background piece. I'm just gonna let it kind of spread out into the water. It wasn't spreading as much as I would have liked. So I did bring in some more um, water. I didn't particularly necessarily touch the color. I just put down some more water so that if it wanted to flow upward, it would have the opportunity. And then I'm just gonna add a little bit more of that watered down salty ocean to the edge to kind of encourage that movement. That's pretty much all I did with that's that's all of the water coloring and it was very um time consuming you can see oh i'm gonna go ahead and more shadows um so for me just because i'm impatient i mean i think that the result is amazing and it's so different than any other look that you can get with stamps so i would definitely encourage you to try it just remember like i frequently have to remind myself to be patient about it so originally when I was doing this, I had cut my paper to four and three quarters by six so that I would be able to tape it down. I really liked the way the white border looked um, on the bottom right hand side. So I want to conserve that. So I'm cutting off as much as I can on the right hand side and then lining that up with the um, four and a quarter to kind of trim that down. Um, and then I'll do the same thing on the, the top and the bottom. So I trimmed the bottom so that the width, the white border, would be the, the same as the right-hand side, and then I just cut the rest of it off the top. I did um, off-camera adhere this uh, down to a white card base. It is the size of an A2 size card. And then for the sentiment, I really love these Southern sentiments. I think that they're um, really just kind of fun and, you know, bless your heart and hello, darling. And my family, I live in Ohio, but my, my family is from the South. So I love them. I think that they're super cute. So I picked the one that I thought would fit the best. And this is just, a, you know, a sweet little hello card. I stamped that with my mini Misty using the black dye ink from W plus nine. In order to just add a little bit more character, I'm going to use a white gel pen to kind of draw in some highlights, but then also add in some dots over those other little watercolor dots that we did, um, just to, you know, give it some detail and a little bit of fun. The last thing that I'm going to do is use my Clear Wink of Stella to add some shine to 
just the um, highlights of the fruit. And then this card is done, it's complete. So it was very time consuming, but I'm totally glad I did it. I can't wait to Copa color these things now that I've gotten this idea <laughs> um, out of my brain. So thank you guys so much for joining me. Please head over to the W Plus 9 blog if you are watching in July of 17 to see the rest of the uh, projects from the design team. Bye.